and we're ready. As you are able, please rise for the arrival of Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Honorary Chief of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. In his honor, Howard Foote, please remain standing for the playing of the Royal Salute. Thank you. Please be seated. Good morning. My name is Constable Georgina Short, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Memorial Campus for the official launch of Rush Justice, Policing Crime and the Origin of the Newfoundland Constabulary, 1729-1871 and for the proclamation signing for the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary's 150th anniversary. I extend a warm welcome to those of you who are in this room and to those who have joined us online. Since March 2020, we all have followed guidelines and developed plans in order to continue operation through the COVID-19 alert system. Today, we continue to follow the public health guidance we have limited the number of participants and guests inside our lecture theater. We will wear a non-medical mask when we are seated and moving about. All speakers will remove their masks when they speak from the podium and for the proclamation signing. They will put their masks back on to return to their seats. Physical distancing will also be maintained. I'm going to leave my mask on because I will be moving about. I would like to take a moment to introduce our special guests it is my pleasure to introduce to you Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Honorary Chief of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. His Honor, Howard Foote, Aide de Camp, Superintendent Sharon Warren, Chief Joseph Bolin, Chief of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, the Honorable Edward Roberts, former Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Chair of the RNC Historical Society. Mr. Jerry Cranford, publisher of Flanker Press. We have Mr. Keith Mercer, author, Rough Justice, and Ms. Eleanor Gill Radcliffe joining us online. In addition, we are most appreciative and honored to have all of you join us here today. I now invite Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Honorary Chief of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary to come forward and bring greetings. Now I can breathe. If all of you uh, know Georgina as well as I do, you know that she probably wishes now that she could crawl under this podium. Um, not to worry, Georgina, that was fine. It happens at other occasions too. Well, good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here. 
And what a glorious morning it is for those of us who've been living through uh, fog and rain for three weeks. Uh, this is a good morning to be outside. I'm so pleased to be here. Thank you for the invitation uh, for the launch of Rough Justice, which, as Georgina has said, documents the history of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary from 1729 to 1871. Uh, delighted to be here as well to sign the proclamation as we celebrate uh, the 150th anniversary of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. And while I've not yet read the entire book, Rough Justice, revived stories that might otherwise have been forgotten. Documenting our history is so important, not only because it creates a record, but because it is important to know and understand our history. At Government House, we encourage tours for that very reason. The lived experiences of the constables found on the pages of this book covers the period of 142 years that came before the formal establishment of the RNC in 1871. The book is an ideal complement to the 150th anniversary celebration. And I congratulate everyone who's been involved in seeing the book come to fruition. In doing so, I acknowledge the members of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Historical Society who took the initiative to preserve the history of the RNC, for which I have the honor as Lieutenant Governor to serve as Honorary Chief. Given the history, the RNC dates back to 1729, nearly 300 years. Undoubtedly, a tremendous amount of research was involved to see the book Rough Justice become a reality. I especially acknowledge the presence today of former Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Edward Roberts, who became the chair of the RNC Historical Society following the chairmanship of Mr. Bill Mahoney, who has been recognized in our province as a community caregiver with the Order of Newfoundland and Labrador and a Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers. Now, I understand Mr. Mahoney was instrumental in convincing Mr. Roberts to agree to take on the chairmanship. The launch of Rough Justice, authored by Keith Mercer, uh, and congratulations to Keith, and published by Flanker Press, and thank you so much to Flanker Press, is evidence that Mr. Roberts and Mr. Mahoney obviously made a good team. Both felt strongly the history of the RNC should be documented and set out to make it happen. I'm especially pleased that Rough Justice is dedicated to former RC in Chief Robert, whom we called Bob Johnston with whom I had the pleasure to work closely when I was in another occupation, and he provided security detail. There was no finer individual. He was diligent, committed to the job, and always, always kind. The Governor General appointed him an officer of the Order of Police Merit in 2012, the only RNC member to ever receive the honor. When I became Lieutenant Governor, Bob and Gloria made a point to come by Government House for the 2019 New Year's levy, despite having been diagnosed with and being treated for brain cancer. Six months later, his R and I were so sad to say goodbye. The RNC motto, Safer Communities Through Practicing Excellence, speaks to the dedication of the officers of the constabulary as they continue to perform their duties with the goal of keeping all of us safe. As the oldest continuous police service in Canada, the rich history of the RNC was recognized by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II in 1979 when the royal designation was conferred on the constabulary. That prestigious distinction has only been applied to two police forces in the country, the other being the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Government House has enjoyed a mutually beneficial relationship with the RNC through the Mounted Unit. And on November the 2nd, 2007, the stables on the grounds of Government House were officially opened by then Lieutenant Governor, the Honorable Edward Roberts, along with RNC Chief Joseph Brown and the Minister of the Time, Minister of Justice, Jerome Kennedy. And I'm pleased today to see Elaine Dobbin here. And uh, Elaine, of course, uh, has been very much involved with the mounted unit, and uh, we now have Dobbin too uh, among the unit. Thank you again for the invitation to be here with all of you, to share in the book launch. And again, I congratulate Keith and Flanker Press. I take this opportunity to thank all members of the RNC for the work that you do 
to keep us safe while hopefully making sure you keep yourself safe as well. As the Honorary Chief, it's a privilege to be a part of this event and to mark this milestone in the history of the RNC with a proclamation, which I understand we will be signing later. Thank you so much. Thank you, Your Honor. I now invite the Honorable Edward Roberts, former Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador and Chair of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Historical Society to come forward and bring greetings. It's not just the mask, it's the earpieces. I gotta tell you. Anyway, good morning, and uh, thank you, Georgina, for letting me take off the mask. You'll let Eve know that it will, was off only at your permission, and it'll go back on. Your Honours, uh, Chief Boland, my colleagues in the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Historical Society, and those here, and those who are watching this event through the miracles of the internet, good morning. This is a memorable day in the century and a half history of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary. And I believe it's an important moment in the story of the maintenance of law and order, law and public order, in Newfoundland and Labrador. We're gathered to launch Keith Mercer's wonderful book entitled Rough Justice. That is. Our other speakers, I have no doubt, will tell you about it, so I shall simply say that I consider it a very important contribution to our knowledge of Newfoundland's past. Any of those who thought that our history was one of mere barbarism will see a new world when they realize that from the time the first naval governor came, the first royal governor in 1729, Captain Henry Osborne, we had a public protection service equal to that anywhere else in comparable uh, parts of the world, in British colonies, and it's been there ever since. So Keith Mercer has done a real service to all of his fellow Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. So let me focus, enough said about that, on those who helped to make this day possible. Keith's name, of course, is at the top of the list. It is his book. I'm sure that it dominated his life for the 10 years. It's 10 years, I guess in a couple of months since Bill Mahoney and I shined the written agreement with Keith, and we commissioned him to write the book. We've never had cause to regret it, and we've had much cause to rejoice in it. Ten years is a long time, and we've had ups and downs, but I want to say that the book was worth the wait. And if you haven't read it, go buy one right away. We get the royalties. We, we own the copyright, the society, and read it. It is a very, is well written as, very, as well as a very fine book. I believe it to be a substantial addition to our knowledge of life in Newfoundland between 1729 and 1871. Rough Justice, as you'll discover when you read it, is based upon a thorough review of all of the available written records, and they are substantial and they are available. It's a story captured by Keith's fine writing and his impeccable analysis of events. But Keith didn't do it alone, as he'd be the first to acknowledge. He kept closely in touch with Jim Hiller, often seeking his advice and guidance over the entire 10-year period. Jim is with us today, and I want to thank, acknowledge and thank him. Four successive chiefs of the RNC stood by us every step of the long path between an idea and a book in one's hand. Three of them, Joe Brown, Bill Jaynes, and Joe Boland, the current chief, are still members of the society. The, deputy, the chief uh, is, by, by our constitution, the, the vice chair of the, the society. And as was mentioned by Her Honor, Robert Johnson, who was known to many of us as Bob, 
with Robert to his family and close friends, served as the 20th Chief of the RNC between May 2010 and February 2014. Bob died a little more than a year and a half ago, tragically young. There would have been, and let me say this clearly, no book without him. My colleagues and I are grateful that Gloria, his wife, has permitted us to dedicate this volume to him. My colleagues on the Society's Book Committee worked with me throughout the entire period of putting this book together. And there were bumps and there were ups and downs and rounds and abouts. Bill Mahoney, Joe Boland, Jim Hiller, Peter Kennedy, they were the book committee. Endless phone calls, endless discussions, always working out the way to go. They contributed both knowledge and passion towards transforming our dream into reality. Their contribution was invaluable. Flanker Press, a Newfoundland publishing company, has transformed Keith's manuscript into the wonderful book that you hold in your hands now. Some of you hold it in your hands now. All of those, Jerry Cranford, who's with us today, and all of those who work with him deserve both our praise and our thanks. And finally, I want to express our formal thanks to those who supported the project financially. We can say with some pride in the RNCHS that this was, we did not have to look to the government to finance this. We financed it on our own, but not with our own money. We had a very small early contribution from the government today in 2010, which helped us to do some research work. We were wondering whether there was an, or enough documents, enough material to support the history, and the answer was there was. With that said, other than that, I think it was a $5,000 grant. I will tell you that every penny beyond that amount has been provided by the four donors, hold on now, I got myself confused, have been provided by the four donors I've already, I will, I will, I'm about to thank. Two of them are with us today, Elaine Dobbin, and Eleanor Gill Ratcliffe, I have no doubt, is watching in Kingston, Ontario. The other two, Jim Hines and Susan Patton, cannot be with us today, but I want to acknowledge publicly their role as well. There would have been no book without Eleanor's very substantial financial support. I tell the story in detail in the book's foreword. Bill Mahoney and I, will, we lived through it. One phone call. One phone call. And she agreed to support the entire project. And Peter Kennedy, our treasurer, can tell us she honored every penny of that commitment to the, to the nickel, to the penny, I should say. So I want to thank, acknowledge Eleanor for standing, for making it possible to commission Keith. And she stood with us over the years it took to write the text and then to engage Flanker Press to publish the first class edition, you see, which it's a first class book. It's a good piece of the bookkeeper's art. Yeah. Elaine Dobbin, Jim Hines, and Susan Patton, to name them alphabetically, have made it possible for the society to provide a copy of the book to every uniformed and civilian member of today's Royal Newfoundland Constabulary and every one of its veterans. I think that's correct, isn't it, Joe? With those three folks, a very generous gift. And it was more generous than we realized because the society retained the copyright to the book. So Jerry will acknowledge we got, a, we got a, an author, the ownership royalty. So we will get, <laughs> the society will get a portion of the cost of those books. We'll put it back. We've still got the second volume to go. Now let me close by telling you that this book is about the first of two volumes to set out the history of the preservation of public order in Newfoundland in the nigh on 300 years since the first constables were appointed in 1729. Terry Carlson, who unfortunately cannot be with us today, is completing the story of the Newfoundland Constabulary, as it was then known, from its formation in 1871. Well, Terry is here. Sorry, I didn't recognize you with all your clothes on, Terry. But, uh, well, I'm glad he's here because he's taken up the cudgels taken up the chore of finishing the job. 
completing the story. It'll bring it right up to the period just after Confederation, from 1871 to 1950. Those men, and they were all men in those long ago days, provided police services to the colony of Newfoundland, the dominion of Newfoundland, and the province of Newfoundland, now Newfoundland and Labrador, throughout our history until 1951, when the Royal Canadian Mounted Police assumed responsibility for rural areas. The RNC was founded two years before the Northwest Mounted Police, the predecessors to today's RCMP. The two forces are the oldest national police services in Canada, and the RNC is the oldest national police service in Canada. Many of us didn't realize it, but it's correct. In any event, we anticipate that Terry's book will be published sometime later this year or early in 2022, and we look forward to that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. I now invite Mr. Jerry Cranford, publisher of Flanker Press, to come forward and bring greetings. Following Mr. Cranford's greetings, he will introduce author Keith Mercer. Mr. Cranford. Good morning. Thank you all for being here, Your Honours. My name is Jerry Cranford, and I am the publisher and owner of Flanker Press. Uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to be part of this momentous event. Uh, it truly is an honor. Um, I've been in book publishing for 27 years. My father and I started in our living room in 1994, and, um, but, but this occasion stands as a shining moment in my career. Uh, yesterday, when I toured these facilities on a, on a site visit with Constable Georgina Short. I took notice of some words engraved on one of the walls here, and I noticed the same words on this banner here as well, um, which point to the core values that each member of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary uh, upholds. Uh, they are integrity, respect, teamwork, pride, and professionalism. Important words. And I like to think that as a book publishing firm, uh, my colleagues and I at Flanker Press uh, follow a similar code of conduct. And, and that adding a fine work like Rough Justice to our repertoire is a natural fit. Uh, I would like to express my sincerest thanks to, Ms. to the Honorable Mr. Edward Roberts and the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Historical Society for entrusting this important piece of Newfoundland and Labrador history to us for publication. It's been and continues to be a pleasure working with you all. Also, thank you to the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary for hosting this event at the RNC Memorial Theater. Uh, and I will be remiss if I did not also give special thanks to Constable Georgina Short for sharing her time and expertise with us to ensure this book launch will be the success it has. In closing, I would like to introduce you all to Keith Mercer, the author of this masterpiece. And I hope you can all join me in offering this native Ganderite uh, our thanks and to congratulate him on his first published book. Thank you, Jerry. Can you hear me? Again. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks again, and uh, I would uh, uh, like to thank uh, Mr. Roberts and uh, Her Honor, Ms. Foote, uh, for the, the lovely introductions um, to begin this uh, ceremony. Uh, I'd like to, to start with, uh, with a few thank yous of my own. Uh, as Mr. Roberts indicated, it's been, uh, this book has been a decade in the making, and uh, so a lot, of, a lot of people and a lot of effort have gone into it. I would I'd like to start with, uh, with the RNC itself, and uh, I'd particularly like to thank Chief Boland and Ms. Georgina Short uh, and, the, and the constabulary for putting on this wonderful event. 
obviously I'm not there in person. I had hoped to be, um, and I wish I could be. Uh, but uh, a year of COVID is just, uh, we just have to roll with the punches. So thank you for, for putting on this wonderful event and also for your, for your support. Uh, I'd like to thank in particular, uh, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary Historical Society. Uh, and it's, it's really their vision and uh, organi organizing that, that made the book possible. And um, I'd like to thank in particular, Mr. Roberts and the other members of the original book committee with whom I came into contact about 10 years ago and now. That includes Bill Mahoney, Gary Brown, uh, Jim Hiller, and uh, we've already noted uh, uh, the late former chief of the force, uh, Bob Johnston, to whom the book is dedicated and a uh, particular thank you to him he was a great champion of the forces, history and heritage, and I'd like to think that uh, that he would be proud of this moment. Um, I'd also like to thank Jerry and his team at Flanker Press. Uh, as an author, you've been hands-on and outstanding to work with, and uh, you've produced a wonderful volume. Of course, I'm biased, but uh, I think uh, I think it's uh, it's an excellent production. I noted that uh, my wife and I took a stroll down to the to the local shopping mall here just yesterday, and there was a, a bookstore there, and we went in, and to my surprise, it was staring me right in the face. I said, "Isn't that a nice looking book?" So it's uh, it's always a it's always uh, um, very exciting as an author to see that, and uh, I'm proud of uh, proud of the production. I think it's a it's an excellent production. So thanks to everyone at Flanker. Um, you know, behind the scenes, there there are lots of other folks that have uh, that helped me along the way. Uh, the number of uh, researchers and scholars who have helped with uh, uh, their sources or have read drafts of the manuscript or chapters are are probably too many to to recall here. But uh, a great thank you to all of them. Uh, it's really appreciated. I'd like to thank, in particular, the the different archivists and librarians, and they know who they are at places like the rooms right next door to you today, or the Center for Newfoundland Studies at Memorial. Um, I'm I'm sure they they got a little tired of all my requests, uh, but without them uh, doing a lot of the research and writing from a distance, uh, the book wouldn't have been possible. So a heartfelt thank you uh, to all of you. Um, and also thank you for uh, some of the other folks that uh, provided indispensable help in making in, in really reaching the finish line. Marnie Parsons in editing, Joan Ritzy on the index, and Albert, Albert Taylor on the maps. It all contributed to making it uh, a finer read, I think, and, uh, and a better looking volume. So thank you to everyone. Uh, and last, and certainly not, not least, I'd like to, to thank my family. Um, you know, again, I wish, I wish I was there in person today so I could see some of the folks. Uh, I've got a couple of relatives there in the room, so hello. And I've got many more watching, I know, online. And uh, the number of uh, congratulations and just the general enthusiasm I've, enthusiasm I've been receiving over the past few weeks has been enormous. So uh, thank you to everyone. Um, and I'll have to, I'll have to do uh, some book signings later on. Uh, I'd like to thank in particular my wife, Amy, uh, she, with, without her support, this, this wouldn't have been possible. How many late nights and, and stealing spare hours to work on this thing over the past 10 years. It's, uh, it's a lot and anyone who's gone through it would understand, uh, you know, the dedication and the, the support that needs to go into it from, from lots of folks. And uh, I'd like to close my thank yous by thanking my little ones, Abby and Sam. They're at uh, school and preschool today, but they're my greatest champions and promoters. And uh, and someday maybe even they'll be interested enough to read the book. So uh, so thank you to everyone. Um, in terms of today and uh, the 150th anniversary of the of the establishment of Newfoundland Constabulary in 1871, it's really I think uh, a monumental event, a really significant event uh, in the history of Newfoundland and, and one that's worthy of this commemoration. I would note that it, it's, not, it's not just um, the fact that uh, policing was put on a more professional and established footing in 1871, but I would argue that uh, the Newfoundland government uh, was forced to play a, a much larger role in its own security and defense and governance 
through these events. So I think it's a significant uh, story. I think it's one that uh, really deserves uh, a prominent place in our history books uh, and our history telling, not just our scholarly history, but also in terms of the, the history and heritage we teach to our children in schools. So uh, I'm, I'm proud to be here today and uh, I'm proud to be part of this uh, important anniversary. Of course, 1871 was not the, the start of policing in Newfoundland, and that's what my uh, that's what my book was really about. Um, it really tells the story of how we got here, how we got to 1871, and the long and uh, sometimes rocky road uh, toward the formation of the constabulary uh, in the early 1870s. You can draw a straight line between 1729, which was the introduction of formal government. Uh, constables and justice of the peace in Newfoundland through 1871 and establishment of the Newfoundland Constabulary Force to the present day. And that makes uh, the RNC the oldest continuous police service uh, in Newfoundland. And it's a long uh, and proud, proud history. Um, on the book itself, Rough Justice, if you if you've uh, managed to have a look, has a, has a couple different meanings and it's most um, tangible sense, I guess, is, is that life was rough in these older times. The justice system and the way people experience the justice system could be rough. And uh, the police constables that I talk about here, uh, I call them unsung heroes. Uh, they were really the heart of their communities and a lot of communities are, are factored into this book. Uh, they would have been on the front lines. They would have been the ones enforcing court orders. They would have been attending the court. Uh, they would have been the ones making arrests, executing warrants, um, sometimes even uh, punishing felons and, and vagrants. So in that sense, uh, justice was rough. And uh, in some of those interactions, uh, obviously people weren't always happy to have uh, have uh, constables knocking on their doors. And uh, they sometimes uh, encountered rough justice in return, uh, resistance, and sometimes outright violence. And they didn't always get the support they needed from the court. So in that sense, this was very much rough justice. And um, and they were, at the, they were at the heart of this. I mentioned in, uh, I did a comedian interview for the book there last week. And I, I was talking about one particular constable who was in charge of the St. John's police for about 25 years in the early 19th century. And I made the remark that uh, I, would, I would wager that most people out there, including Newfoundland historians, had never heard of this particular person before. His name was William Fippert. Um, but that everyone in town in those 25 years would have known exactly who he was because that he would have interacted with him in all walks of life. Uh, he would have been known pretty much more than anyone else. And I think that's true, not just of the, the high constables and the heads of the police in their particular communities, um, but the rank of file. Um, these communities weren't large. These guys were well known and they were instrumental, not just to making the justice system work in their communities, but also making their communities safe and keeping things going. Everyone would have known these fellows. And uh, I think for that reason, uh, with a with an emphasis here on the rank and file and and the regular constable that uh, that they deserve uh, a place in the history books and hopefully this my book uh, goes to a small degree to, to making that happen. Uh, rough justice also has a, has another meaning. Um, I would I would say until you know, in, until the last couple of decades, the way in which we understood the history of policing, particularly in the time period I'm talking about, old policing, uh, has changed dramatically uh, from Shakespearean times through the, the high morals of Victorian society. The constables in the time period I'm talking about were really dismissed, ridiculed, and caricature and so on as uh, corrupt or amateurs or inefficient and so forth. Uh, what's happened recently uh, in other places in terms of history writing is we have a much more uh, nuanced understanding of uh, policing and we've come to understand that that character is not true and that the evolution of policing and the professionalization of police, policing was a much longer uh, evolutionary process 
And the same was true of Newfoundland. And what I tried to do in this book in terms of that larger writing of history is to show that and to integrate the story of these constables, uh, police, you know, law enforcement into the larger history of Newfoundland in terms of the, the storylines of the, the economy and politics and the law and so forth. Uh, at the moment, they're not there. And hopefully again, to a small degree, this book allows them to, uh, to be recognized. And I would just, uh, I would just uh, in closing, I would like to say that, uh, and hopefully for the people who do have a copy of this book or you, you go out and get one, that it's entertaining, that there are lots of interesting figures uh, that you can relate to in its pages, lots of colorful figures, lots of, you know, there's a lot of case studies about crime and uh, not just the most prominent uh, cases that you would you might be familiar with, but lots of other ones. And I've tried my best to incorporate as many Newfoundland communities as possible into the narrative, not just the larger centers like St. John's and some of the large towns in Conception Bay, but really from the South Shore running up the Northeast coast and even to a, a certain extent Labrador that um, that this, uh, this history is one of, uh, of Newfoundland generally. And uh, so I'm, I just hope that people enjoy it. And I hope to, uh, uh, to all the, uh, the police officers in the constabulary, the, the men and women who were given copies of this book. And I think that's fantastic. I hope, uh, I hope this, um, um, is a, is a fitting achievement for their, their history and their heritage and their legacy. So I'll leave it at that. And I thank you. And, and again, it's a, it's a great pleasure to be here and uh, be part of this anniversary. Thank you, Mr. Mercer and Mr. Cranford. Uh, while Mr. Mercer is not on Zoom, he is uh, viewing it from the camera. We do have him viewing live. Um, I now invite Chief Joseph Boland to come forward and bring greetings. Well, certainly a tough act to follow. Keith, great job and great presentation today. Thank you, Georgina, your honors, the Honorable Edward Roberts, RNC Historical Society members, Ms. Elner Gil Radcliffe, Mr. Keith Mercer, special guests. It's an honor and a privilege for me as Chief of Police of the Royal Falan Constabulary to be here for the celebration and launch of Mr. Mercer's book, Rough Justice, and for the proclamation signing for the Royal Falan Constabulary's 150th anniversary. There are many people who I would like to thank for making this day possible. First, I would like to thank the RNC Historical Society Chair, Mr. Edward Roberts, and past chair, Mr. Bill Mahoney, for recognizing the importance of capturing our province's policing history, and for their unwavering commitment to ensuring this story was accurately captured and shared with the people of Newfoundland and Labrador. I think we would all agree that Mr. Roberts and Mr. Mahoney, through their tenacity, energy, and influence, ensured this project would make us all very proud. I would also like to thank Ms. Eleanor Gill Radcliffe for her keen interest, input, and inspiration for this project. Ms. Gill Radcliffe is well known for her philanthropy work in our province and beyond. Her generous donation ensured this project would have the resources required to professionally capture the origins of policing in Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you as well to Mrs. Elaine Dobbin, Mrs. Susan Patton, Mr. Jim Hines for your continued support to the RNC and to our province. Because of your generosity, every RNC veteran and current RNC member will receive a complimentary copy of Roth Justice. Thank you to Mr. Jim Zaleski for generously hosting the gala and auction fundraiser which proceeds provided the RNC Historical Society with significant funds that were also utilized for this project. 
I would like to thank the current and past members of the RNC Historical Society. Your determination, dedication, and commitment ensured success and completion of Rough Justice. I would also like to sincerely thank you for dedicating Rough Justice in the memory of former Chief of Police Robert Johnson and recognizing Bob's incredible career and contributions to the RNC and to our province. To Mr. Keith Mercer, thank you for agreeing to take, the, take on this project. You have provided RNC members, past and present, with a thoroughly researched and accurate account of the origins of policing in our province. Your work is truly a gift to our province, and it will mark its place in our steep, and, uh, our steep history. Thank you to Mr. Jerry Cranford and to his team at Flanker Press. It was an absolute pleasure to work with you and your dedicated and professional staff. Your input, guidance, and support is much appreciated. Rough Justice, as you have heard, covers the years 1729 to 1872. Today, we will also celebrate the significant milestones of our history with the proclamation signing by Her Honor and the Royal Lafayette Constabulary's 150th anniversary, which covers the period from 18, uh, 1871 to 2022. Thank you all for coming. It's a very proud day for our organization and Mr. Roberts to you and the Historical Society, especially Bill. Uh, this is very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chief Bolin. Her Honor, the Honorable Judy Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, and Chief Bolin will now participate in the proclamation signing for the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary 150th anniversary, which covers the period from 1871 to 2022. I would like to invite Her Honor also to come forward. Chief Bolin will now read the proclamation. It's funny, when you become chief, there's always a first, so. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, proclamation. Ronald Flank Constabulary, 150th anniversary, April 2021 to April 2022. Whereas Captain Henry Osborne, Royal Navy, Newfoundland's governor, upon assuming authority in 1729, divided the colony of Newfoundland into six districts and appointed the first constables and magistrates charged with maintaining law and order. And whereas in 1844, Governor Sir John Harvey, having previously served as Inspector General of Police in the Irish province of Leinster, appointed Timothy Mitchell, who would later assume the title of Inspector General Superintendent of Police, was charged with further modernizing the fledging Newfoundland Constabulary Force. And whereas the year 1870 marked the withdrawal by Britain of the Imperial Garrison uh, and the requirement to reorganize and expand the constabulary independent of the authority of the stipendiary magistrates. And whereas the Executive Council on 18 April 1871 appointed Thomas Foley a decorated High Constable from the Royal Irish Constabulary as Inspector and General Superintendent of Police responsible for all police constables in the colony subject to the direction of the Newfoundland Executive Council. And whereas on the 25th of April 1872, Newfoundland's Legislature, House of Assembly and the Legislative Council adopted an act to organize and maintain an efficient constabulary force. And whereas the Royal Newfoundland, the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary is the oldest national police force in today's Canada and is the oldest continuous police service in Canada. Now therefore I, Judy M. Foote, Lieutenant Governor of Newfoundland and Labrador, an honorary chief of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary, do proclaim the year April 2021 to April 2022 as the 150th anniversary of the Royal Newfoundland Constabulary.
think Georgina's getting another one. That's why. I think it works. Yeah. Thank you. I expect the new pins. Oh, okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Chief Bowler. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. It's been our pleasure to host this ceremony and we wish you all a pleasant day. Take care of yourselves and each other. As you are able, please rise for the departure of their honor.